Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and this question I'm going to answer in this video is the first question from this paper, the P3, Pure Mathematics P3, International A Level Ed Excel, um, January 2022 exam. And I'm going to go through this paper one question at a time. I'm going to save each question in a separate video so that I can classify the question according to its the paper and also according to its topic so in the end i'll have a playlist with the questions from the paper january 2022 um from this exam and also i'll have another playlist with the top all the all the questions i've answered from that particular topic um so that's how i'm going to go about it and i'm not going to answer it in a way like oh this is how you how fast you're supposed to do in the exam now, there's going to be some exam tips in there, but I'm going to try to explain the topic in such a way that a student whose background information is a bit weak will be able to hopefully understand how to tackle a similar type of question if they find one. So I sometimes go a bit into the background of the topic to help those type of students that might have not been either concentrating properly while they were being taught or they weren't taught properly or they didn't have like a, a tutor or a school or whatever so that they can hopefully benefit from the videos. So let's start with question number one. It says, find using calculus the x-coordinate of the stationary point on the curve with this equation. So first of all, using calculus means using differentiation or integration. All right, the x-coordinate of the stationary point. So we don't want to find the coordinates, we want to find the x-coordinates. So always read the question carefully to save yourself from wasting time in the exam. If they said the coordinates, then you'd have to find the y coordinate as well as the x coordinate. It says the x coordinate, we don't need to find the y coordinate. So it's very important for us to understand that. Sometimes it says find the coordinates of, in that case, you'd have to find the x and y coordinate. And if you didn't find the y coordinate, you would lose marks. So it's sometimes a small little change in the wording affects the question quite considerably and the marks that you might gain or lose or the time you might gain or, or lose. Um, so that's the x coordinate of the stationary point. The stationary point is a place where the gradient of the curve becomes zero. So it could either be a maximum, a minimum, could be sometimes a point of inflection where the gradient becomes zero. Okay, something like these. These are point, these, these are points of gra zero gradient, which are called stationary points. Now in this question, it doesn't tell us to find what the nature of the stationary point is. It doesn't tell us to, to calculate whether it is a maximum or a minimum or anything like that. It's just saying find the coordinates of the stationary point on the curve. So now what we can understand is there's only one stationary point from the wording of the question. That's one thing. And secondly, we have to use calculus to find the stationary point. Now, as I said, the stationary point is a point of zero gradient on the curve. So basically, that's when, when you find the gradient function dy dx, it's going to equal zero. So the first step is we're going to find dy dx. So we know that y is equal to 2x plus 5 times e to the power of 3x. Now here we have... Um, something if we wanted to we could expand it and then differentiate although expanding it won't help us because you'll end up with 2x times e to the power of 3x um, plus 5 e to the power of 3x now the 2x times e to the power of 3x is a product of two separate functions which I'll have to use the product rule to differentiate just as I have to do in this case if I take this as one one term so 2x plus 5 times e to the power of 3x. This is a product of two separate functions, which I cannot use the chain rule to differentiate because it's not a function within a function. It is a function multiplied by a separate function. So I'm going to use a product rule, which is you take one of the terms and call it u, which is 2x plus 5, I'll call that u. And the other term, you call it v, that's e to the power of 3x. And then I find the differential, I differentiate with respect to x, u, that's going to give me 2, and v, if I differentiate that, it's going to give me, well, e to the power of x stays as it is. All right, that's how you differentiate e to the power of 3, e to the power of something. But then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. So I've got to multiply by 3, because 3 is the function inside the function. So if I multiply by 3, it gives me 3 e to the power of 3x. So this is using the chain rule. If e to the power of something differentiates, it stays as it is. Okay, that's how, you, how it differentiates. Then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 3. 3x differentiates to give you 3, so you multiply by 3. Now we're going to use the product rule. Now a lot of people, they use the product rule u times v dash plus v times u dash, and that's perfectly fine. I just like to do 
this first because for the quotient rule you have to do it this way first because you're subtracting this times that minus that times that so I like to stick to just one way start from the top right and come down so you'll notice that may, maybe my answers are in the opposite um, direction to the uh, or opposite order to the mark schemes so e to the power of 3x times 2 and that's 2 e to the power of 3x plus and you're going to have uh, 2x plus 5 times 3 e to the power of 3x so that's like 3 e to the power of 3x multiplied by 2x plus 5. Okay, so that is dy dx. And we have to find the value of x when this is equal to 0. So we have to make dy dx equal 0. So we have 2 e to the power of 3x plus 3 e to the power of 3x times 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. Now, if I want to solve this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the common factor. The common factor on these two terms is e to the power of 3x. So I have e to the power of 3x this gives me 2 plus 3 times 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. So I have either e to the power of 3x equals 0, in which case there's no solution, because e to the power of something okay, can never equal 0. All right? Um, so there's no solution to that. No solution. Okay, because all these um, exponential functions, some, they will look something like this. So it'll never hit the x-axis, so y never becomes 0, so it never equals 0. So there's no solution to that. Then we've got 2 plus 3 times 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. So let's solve this for x, and we've got our answer. So we have 2 plus 6x plus 15 equals 0. 6x plus 17 equals 0. So we can say 6x equals negative 17. So x equals negative 17 over 6. And there is our answer. Simple as that. We don't have to do anything else with it. We don't have to find the y coordinate. If we did, we'd just simply re replace the x in this equation with negative 17 over 6. But here, that's the answer to the question. x equals negative 17 over 6. And that's question number one. Pretty simple. Product rule is done. So other questions from this particular paper, you'll find in the playlist that should appear in this region here, this area here. Other questions from... Um, differentiation from P3 can be found in this playlist over here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.